Hello, welcome. My name's Frank, and this week we are focusing on Burgundy, another very highly sought after area, just like Bordeaux. On paper, it should be a lot easier to understand. It's much smaller in size. There's only two main grape varieties of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, and there's a lot less production. However, due to the way that the vineyards are divided and due to the hierarchy system, it's actually a lot more complex. Burgundy is located in the east of France between Dijon and Lyon, and only covers about a fifth of the size of Bordeaux. And that's including Chablis, which is located about 60 to 70 miles north. Despite its small size, there's still a lot to unpick, with many different districts, communes, villages, premier crews and grand cru sites, and over a hundred appellations. The easiest place to start is probably with the two main grape varieties, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. There is planting of Alligate and Gamay, but the focus is certainly just on Chardonnay and Pinot. Now just by saying the word Chardonnay, I'm sure some of you have already switched off, but I do wager that I could probably find a different style of Chardonnay to fit everybody's taste just within Burgundy. As a grape, it should always display crisp green apple aromas and blossom characteristics. Then dependent on its growing environment and the amount of work added into the winery, we can look at additional tasting notes being added. From the cool climate in Chablis in the north, we look at citrus and mineral elements, to the Côte de Bone, where we have riper stone fruit aromas, as well as the use of oak aging, giving us cedar, toast, and vanilla, to the warmer climate in the Maponnaise, where we will notice more tropical aromas within the wine. The other main grape variety is Pinot Noir. It's a very difficult grape variety to grow. It's very thin-skinned, and is a very late ripener, meaning that it needs to be planted in just the right location. It's also a very low yielding grape variety, meaning that we get less grapes per vine, which sadly forces the price up. When done well, it can produce beautifully light, elegant, yet well-structured wines with vibrant red fruit characteristics of strawberry, raspberry, and red cherry. Because of its thin skin, it will always be pale in color and very light in tannin, However, some of the best examples can still age for a very long time. However, the majority are best drunk whilst they're still young and fresh. Because of its elegance, it very rarely sees lots of oak aging, as that will just overpower the fruit. Pinot Noir for me was one of my first wine moments, to taste something that was so soft and light on the palate, yet rich and complex. The way that it exploded across the palate, that's one of the things that really got me into wine. Growing vines in Burgundy has its difficulties through spring frosts, localized hailstorms, excess water and rain, and not enough sun and warmth in certain vintages. So extra care and attention is required in the vineyard to maximize full exposure to the sun through careful canopy management, as well as site selection, making sure that your vine has enough slope to drain away the excess water, as well as the right aspect and soil type for your vine with Chardonnay liking limestone and Pinot Noir liking marl and clay. Sounds simple enough. However, vineyards are very expensive and in high demand in Burgundy. There are four quality levels throughout Burgundy, starting with the generic Bourgogne AC, which will source grapes from anywhere within Burgundy. If made from a good producer, then this is a really good source for excellent value. We then have the commune or village which will indicate the individual village that the grapes have been harvested from. So whether that's Merceau, Gevrigembertin, or Pelletousse. Then all of the best sites have been divided into individual vineyards, referred to as Premier Cru and Grand Cru. This is a hierarchy system created by the Schusterson monks over 800 years ago, which indicated which vineyard sites were better than others. Now, unlike Bordeaux, these vineyard sites haven't increased in size. However, due to the inheritance tax in France, where each site gets divided equally between the owner's children, then the ownership has become highly fragmented and divided. Meaning, as opposed to in Bordeaux, where we see single sites of 100 hectares, in Burgundy we're looking at 5 to 10 hectares split between several different sites. To the real extreme of the Grand Cru vineyard of Clos de Vougeau, which is only 50 hectares, split between 80 different producers.
Burgundy is split into four key areas. Chablis, the Côte d'Or, which itself is split into the Côte de Nuit and the Côte de Beaune, the Chalonnais and the Maconnais, with the majority of premium production coming from the Côte d'Or, which we'll look at in just a second. Starting with Chablis in the far north, this is home to some of the purest and finest examples of Chardonnay, which are clean, fresh, and mineral. It's probably one of the most referenced styles for us, with people often saying, I don't like Chardonnay, can I have a glass of Chablis, please? And that's usually because at the large level, Chablis is unoaked, allowing the wine to focus on that pure, fresh, fruit-driven style. At the higher end of the Premier Cru and Grand Cru, they may have seen a little bit of oak aging, but never brand new, to just give a gentle hint of secondary characteristics. At this higher end, especially the Grand Cru's, for me, I find these to be an excellent source of value by comparison to the other Grand Cru's throughout Burgundy. As I said, the Côte d'Or is split into the Côte de Wee in the north and the Côte de Beaune in the south, with the Côte de Wee giving us some of the finest examples of Pinot Noir in the world, from renowned villages like Gervais Jambatin, Louis Saint Georges, and Von Romanet. You should expect a more structured style of Pinot Noir from these areas, with firmer tannins, a little bit more body, and more earth, leather, and gain characteristics on the nose, often referred to as rustic or farmyard. Now, these wines aren't cheap but when found from a good producer in a top vintage, it can be an overwhelming experience. It has brought a tear to my eye on many occasions. Always feel free to chat to us here and we'll point you in the right direction of what to taste for your palate. In the Côte de Beaune, we have a mix of red and white with arguably some of the best Chardonnays in the world with lots of oak aging, malolactic and batonnage all methods of production for increasing complexity within the wine. For the richer, full-bodied style, head to Merceau. And for the leaner, more structured style, head to Pellini Montrachet. For your Pinot Noir in this area, you should expect slightly lighter body and more elegance, with more floral, violet characteristics in the wines, especially from top areas like Pomard, Volnay and Bone. Moving down into the often forgotten Chalonnais region, where we find some amazing hidden gems and great value. With slightly higher altitude and more fertile soil, we see slightly higher yields and less concentration in the grapes. This helps keep the price per bottle lower. And as the region isn't as well known as the Côte d'Or, then they can't command as such high prices. Look out for great areas like Givry, Rouli, and Mercury. Heading even further south into the Maconnais, this is home to the bulk production for Burgundy. Production is still small and expensive versus other places in the world, but this is the source for everyday drinking wines at sensible prices within Burgundy. The majority is white from Chardonnay, and due to the warmer climate, it will be softer and rounder with less acidity and richer tropical fruits on the nose. Wines found under the labeling of Macon or Macon Village will be unoaked, soft and round, but a very different style from those lean, crisp, unoaked Chardonnays found in Chablis. For the richer and more serious style, head to Poulet Fousse, a little village with lots of oak aging, very full body styles of Chardonnay. To sum up, Burgundy is a small area, but there's still plenty to explore and discover. If you're a fan of Chardonnay or Pinot Noir, of oaky whites or light bodied reds, then look no further than Burgundy. As warned, it is an expensive area. So if in doubt, feel free to talk to us before. We have many Burgundy fanatics working for Avery's who will be happy to share their experience. As always, I hope you're enjoying the videos. Stay safe and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.